The following program contains violence, disturbing imagery, nudity, and oh my god, why are you even watching this? Just run away. This shit is going to give you nightmares. <laughs> Hey, how's everybody doing? Hopefully well. Welcome to Untold Archives. Tonight's episode features a couple of brothers. Actually, let me reword that. Uh, tonight, we've got a couple of pimps who both own cribs in the same hood. Well, for a period of time, they realized they weren't the head shot callers in this district anymore. In fact, their territory was being taken over by rivals. In this case, the rivals were Sasquatches. Hence our title, Squatches in the Hood. Tonight's episode originally aired on Sasquatch Chronicles. It's going to start out a little bit slow, but hang in there. It gets pretty damn interesting, trust me. Without further ado, I give you Squatches in the Hood. You guys got a situation going on there around your guys' home. I know we spent a couple hours talking to Jim Lansdale last night. But Matt, for the audience, maybe I'll start with you since you had the very first encounter. Uh, would you kind of start from the beginning? I know you were tearing a bush out of uh, Mick's yard, but just kind of start from the beginning for the audience, kind of just like we were talking last night. Well, uh, Mick and I were cleaning out a bush. It was uh, been here about 30 years, starting to overhang over the driveway. A buddy of ours stopped by and wanted us to go golfing. And uh, so we left to go golfing, but we told his wife we'd have the bush out before we went to bed that night. So we go golfing, come home, been a long day. Nick decided that he was going to go to bed. So I didn't tell him I was going to tear off the bush. And I waited a little while, went over there, because I knew he'd stay up if he knew I was up. So I was over there <clears throat> late. No one knew I was there over there. It was dark. I opened his garage door with his truck. You know, the garage door opened his truck, ran an extension cord out, so all I had was a light, uh, what do you call it? Halogen light. Yeah, like a halogen light. So shining it out there. I had uh, some snips uh, hand saw. So I don't know what by up with a chainsaw. And was cutting this bush out. I just basically made my way into the trunk area and then was cutting it up and then kind of tearing it off and pulling it out behind me. And then, you know, when I get a big pile, I'd get out, pull them the rest of the way out. Well, I'd been there right probably 15, 20 minutes and I heard a, a loud, almost like half of an owl call, but it was really loud. It didn't have the hollow sound that a that an owl's call has is more like a, you know, like the who without the second. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, absolutely. But it was really loud, and I had a, I had a, my radio going, talk radio on a little, you know, like a Bluetooth uh, radio, so it wasn't loud, but it was, you know, I mean, it was loud enough to catch my attention. The radio wasn't loud, is what I'm saying. So I thought, well, that's kind of weird. I thought maybe somebody was jacking around out there. Didn't think much about it. Three or four minutes later, same thing. Uh, loud, who, you know, like, you know, I don't want to do it, but, you know, it's more, it's really loud. Like, when I was standing at the end of the drive, kind of yelling at you. 
another three or four minutes of task, that same noise happens. And it's like, I've never heard it before. It was like the, it was like an owl's call. Uh, but an owl's call is kind of, it's got that hollow to it and it kind of goes on. It's like, and this was just the, just like something was yelling at me basically. Thought it was someone, obviously, at the time. And I thought, you know, it's dark. We don't have a street lamps around or, you know, it's basically however lit you want your house is about how much light there is out there. So it's a pretty dark neighborhood surrounded by woods. It's a neighborhood in the middle of woods. It's, it's real, uh, there's trees everywhere. And Matt, the alcohol that you heard, what made you think it might have been a person? Was there something about it that made you think, well, that's not an owl? Yeah, because it was, uh, I don't know how to explain it, it like an owl has kind of a, that hollow sound to it. You know what I'm saying? It's like it's a, you know, like a, you've heard, everybody's heard of owl, so you know that it has like this hollow sound, you know, it carries. So this was more like forced, like somebody was, you know, hollering at me. First, I'm thinking, you know, what the world like? You know, my brother's got two teenage boys. I don't rule it out. You know, I'm thinking, somebody's jacking with me here. So I get out, climb off from that big bush. I'm standing there, you know, looking around. It's dark. I don't see anybody. So I, you know, basically took a little bit of a break and climbed back in there. I went in there three or four minutes. And the first two calls had come from, you know, two really distinctly different areas. This is enough, you know, this wasn't like, kind of like, I think I heard something. This was like, you know, it was loud. In this dark neighborhood, everybody's, you know, the neighborhood shut down, it's bedtime. So the third time it happened, it was really loud. And it came really, you know, from like 20 or 40 yards, 30, 40 yards down further. But they all sound a little different, you know, like same call. A little different. So that's when I got out and I thought, okay, I know something's not right here. So I, I text Mick, to be honest with you. I thought, eh, let's wake him up and get him out here. <laughs> you know what I mean? I thought, I'm trying to get this across here, you know, let you know that it's obviously a foreign sound. It's loud. It, if it was a person, they had been standing at the end of the driveway bellowing at me. But at this point, I'm not thinking anything other than there's got to be somebody around this house. So I go back to it. I'm tearing these branches out, pulling them out. It's been, I don't know, 10 or 15 minutes. I hear two uh, distinct slaps. Well, let me take that back. First, I heard a scream, like a very loud scream that was, at that point, you know, something was off. It's obviously wrong. It was like, a, you know, it kind of shook me. Like if it was a, like I said yesterday, I've I've heard lions. You know, I've been to Africa. It was like that. Something very deep and loud. Now I'm thinking, I don't know what in the world is going on. You know, but I'm inside this bush. And, you know, from the outside of the bush, you, you couldn't see I was there. You might be able to hear me or something, but you couldn't see me. Other than that light that's there and the little talk that you going on. When that happens, you know, stop traffic, right? I'm like, <laughs> trying not to, um, much on panic or nothing, but it was definitely loud enough to where I'm wondering, A, why is everyone else not waking up? And B, what in the world is that? You know what I mean? Yeah. So as I'm kind of sitting there, I'm just sitting there kind of almost Indian style under this tree, you know, under this shrub up against the, basically the trunk of it. And I go back to Solon slowly, and I hear two distinct, like, slaps, you know, like like a, like if you used to bend down and slap your hand on the pavement, you know. I thought, what in the world? Shortly after that, I hear like a another scream, not like the first one, but it was like a it's like something had worked itself up. You know, I didn't 
recognize it, whatever it was. But all of a sudden, I heard like footfall on pavement, like if someone was running on barefoot on pavement. Sound like it was coming from, you know, pretty good distance down, like 150, 200 yards down. It's like it was faint. You know, I could hear the footfalls, and I thought, and it was louder, louder, faster, faster. And you know, see you know how time slows down, kind of when yeah, when you're in a high high stress situation. Yeah, I'm sitting there like, think, you know, I'm trying to register all this and thinking, what the world am I hearing? And it was like all of a sudden something, you know, it was almost like something yanked me up and said, go. So I just shot out of that bush. I just spun around, you know, on six knee surgeries. I don't run, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> but I ran that day, that night. So I, you know, I just, there's a real incline to his driveway. And I just turned out of there. Did not look. I remember thinking, do not look. Because I could tell by the speed of the fall that whatever it was, I didn't, you know what I mean? I wasn't going to do nothing to slow myself down. I sure wasn't going to look at it. What did you think it was at this point? I don't know. I, you know, to be, to be fair, I'm picturing, I don't know. I pictured something, something big and loud and fast was chasing me. And that's why I didn't want to look at it because I had no idea. I don't, I don't know. I just knew that it wasn't anything I could really register. So I ran as fast as I could up that driveway. It's probably, I can't read you know, 20, 30 feet. I get to the bed of his truck, which leaves me another, you know, 12, 14 feet to the garage door. And I can hear it coming up the drive. I can hear it breathing. I can hear the feet, everything. And I'm... I'm thinking I'm about to scream because no one knows I'm out there. It's dark. I'm sitting here, you know, kind of thinking, you know, my mind's blown right now. You know what I'm saying? Right when I get a couple steps from the garage door, I, I got to scream. I'm, I'm going to die out here. No one's ever going to know. But I didn't. I didn't scream. I just kept running, made it to the garage door. I ran through his garage, through his garage door, and it kind of slammed it behind me as I ran through it. And then I spun around in his kitchen, and I'm kind of looking at the door. Then I realized I'm standing in his kitchen where him, you know, his wife and three kids are sleeping. And I'm thinking, what am I doing? I'm in his, in his house. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So I kind of stand there for a minute, and then I, you know, I open that door again to look out the garage. I crack it, and I see, a, you know, something big and very black cut from one side to the left side of the garage door to the right in front of my Jeep and behind his truck. And that's when I was like, okay. So I hollered at his son who's, you know, he's got the first bedroom there and he came out and I said, hey, could you get your dad for me and have him grab a gun? And I'm thinking, now I'm thinking, what am I going to say to him when he comes out here that's not going to make me look like an insane person? <laughs> So what did you when you came down there, Mick? What happened? Uh, I could. I my brother is usually calm and cool, and collective. He don't get worked up, and I could tell that something had happened because he was very. Uh, he was worked up. He was. He was. He was yelling at me to grab a gun. Grab a gun. I was like, for what? He said, just grab a gun. So I grabbed the gun. We come out, and uh, I could tell. I want to. I mean, I could tell that he was frightened. Like something had startled him to the point where I hadn't seen. Like I grew up. We grew up together. We lived out in the country, farm, and uh, we were adventurous. We go hiking, do all kinds of stuff. So I mean, like we've seen stuff, but I had never seen him to where he was like he was wanting a gun. He was wanting to. He was worked up. What did you think he was running from? I mean, when he told you what happened, what was going through your mind? Well, we went outside, and uh, we looked around, and there was footprints from the garage door to the door. And uh, the only thing we, at that point, we tried to talk ourselves out of it, but there was footsteps. I have a, I like, like he was telling you yesterday, I have squirrel feeders and bird feeders, out in my front yard on the trees and uh there was a big footprint i have a big tree around where i i had just moved in here in october 
of last year. And uh, there's dirt around the tree, like packed down dirt. And there's a huge footprint from, I have mulch around my front cement patio. And there's like an imprint in that. And then there's another imprint right by the uh, the dirt. The dirt sticks out probably five feet around the tree where somebody had had mulch there or something, rocks, whatever, but it's cleared out now. But And there's a footprint there, but there's footprints because I had a, oil at the entrance of the garage there's a little oil spot and it had stuff in that oil and it was a footprint but it was huge and there's footprints all the way to the door of my house it had went inside my garage all the way to the door and at this point there i mean i've heard but about the footprint Bigfoot and all that so I, that's what we were there was no really that was the only explanation i mean from what he was saying and we didn't want to admit that but at that point there's no other what else could it be you know like there's not anybody that big that that moves that fast were the footprints like human like tracks that you were seeing yeah they're big footprints bigger than like when he put his foot next to it it was you know what even close and then i was thinking like you know remember i saw you know, black thing go from left to right, and I thought, you know, it kind of looked big, but not, you know. How big would you estimate the footprints? I don't know. I would. Say, I wear a size 11, and it was probably almost two of my feet. Huge. Yeah. And that that much wide too, like it was like twice of my, all around twice my foot. And can you talk a little bit about the fluid you found too, as well? Oh yeah, the uh, like he said, it had stepped through uh, some oil or something. But what we saw, I mean, we obviously we still don't know what it is, but it was almost like you know the footprints went all the way into the garage to the doormat. You could see exactly what it did. Stopped the doormat, and it turned around, and he had a in front of the left bay of his garage was a a refrigerator that he was getting ready to have hauled away. And uh, it had turned around, ran behind it. You could see where it was crouched there. And then it turned around and went out the garage door. And then from the left side, you know, of the garage door, wing, whatever, to the right, back to where it came from, basically. But there was, looked like, you know, urine or something, like it was, yeah, it, yeah, it looked like door, it peed you know? while it was running. There's a, there's like a line of, uh, you know, it was like zigzag well, lines, like it was going everywhere. Yeah, and I thought that part was interesting. As Jim and I were talking uh, last night, Jim Lansdale, he was saying that's not uncommon for them to do that. It's not uncommon for them to get excited in the middle of a chase and actually pee. And I thought that was fascinating. I don't know that I've heard a witness say that before. Yeah. Well, we're, you know, like I said, we're kind of standing here, like, looking at each other like, <laughs> you gotta be kidding me right now. And uh, he's like, you know, something, it was probably worked up in here. You know, like I said, I was in that bush. You know, he said it might, you might have scared the piss out of it when he came out of it. <laughs> you know, if it thought it was anyone there, I don't know. I mean, I, I, at this point, I'm just here thinking, I have no idea. And I can't really rule anything out because I'm seeing something I'm not sure. I think like I'd never heard of Bigfoot or nothing, but I was thought to myself, I wouldn't call somebody a liar, but I figured it'd be up in like, you know, mountains or something. I At the time when we were when we were looking at the footsteps and everything, we were thinking that it got so worked up that I didn't realize what it was doing. And once it realized in the it was in the garage, it was thinking, Oh crap, I'm up in these people's garage. Cause it looked like it got up here and then pissed itself all over. Excuse my language, but there's pee all in my garage, like, like he's saying. But at the time when we were breaking down with the flashlight, looking at the footprints and everything, that's what we thought. We thought that it had gotten so worked up and chased him up there that it didn't realize what it was doing. And it was real oily until it was too late. Yeah, and it was oily, like, like it took forever to dry up. Yeah, like I still have, I still have a mark from it, and it happened in March. 
it's going away, but it's like taking forever. I mean, I haven't washed it out or nothing, but you can see where still yeah. of track of it. Let me ask you guys, what's going through your guys' mind at this point? I mean, what are you thinking is going on at this point? I'll tell you what I think. I looked at him and said, uh, we ain't telling one person about this. And he's like, what do you mean? I said, I don't even know. All I know is what I just told you, and I don't, you know what I mean? I, we're going to act like this didn't happen. But I told him, you know, it still bothers me today. I don't, I, I will talk about books, but I don't care. I'm trying to figure out everything I can about them. But I'll tell you right now, I'd like to talk about what happened that night. Because I know I could have easily just peered off this planet and know what I had a clue where I went. You know what I mean? I've thought about that many times. I thought my wife's kids think I just wandered off or something. You know what I mean? No, I, I definitely know what you mean. And uh, that's what I was thinking. You know, it's just unnerving to know that something that quick, you know. And I know for a fact if I'd have sat down under that bush for a few more seconds, thinking something bad would have happened, you know. You know, from that point on, we just kind of kept our ears and eyes open, didn't say nothing. And, you know, little by little, uh, this guy wasn't done. He started kind of making himself known, and that's what we realized. We had something going on. What was the time frame that you had your encounter, Matt, or, Ch- or Mick, where it chased you up to the house? Well, I've had a couple encounters, both of us. We were got curious, trying to figure it out, and we could hear him. Like we'd sit outside my garage at night, and out of curiosity, we wanted to see what it was. So from that point, we had started to sit up in my garage. I got like an owl call. Um, Matt would make but a call and that, call back. Hey, Mick, before that, we had gone into the woods, remember? And oh, yeah. No one really went in there other than, you know, somebody might walk that creek, fish a little bit, but nobody walks that woods. It was really dense and overgrown stuff other than you know the large path cut through it <laughs> but there yeah we got up one everywhere. morning at like seven in the morning and we hiked from one edge all the way to the other and there was footprints and we of all yeah. different sizes like we're sitting there like i mean just like they they whatever's back there running around barefoot wasn't worried about anybody else seeing it that's what we're thinking and we actually and, uh, saw a big gray one follow us like 100 yards, 150 yards back the whole time. And we took pictures on our phone. And that's what I noticed. Of the different footprints. And the, we were seeing, We were. this is when we had our first actual seeing them. And it was, and letting, it, it was letting us see it. Like it was letting us know it was there. Yeah, and we were hearing that faint. Remember the, I told you about the alcohol? This is how all this started. It was like they were hollering back at each other with that same call. I'm like, dude, that's exactly what they're doing. But it was just quieter, you know? So Matt has this encounter where it chases him up past the driveway up into the home. And then you guys decide, you, both you and your brother decide to go walk the property. And you start finding these footprints. You start finding signs of them. You actually saw one. What did it look like when you when you actually saw it in the forest? What how would you describe it? It was, I would say personally that, you know, I didn't know what to expect, but what I what I noticed about it was, it was like the master of blend. At first, he was like, "Dude, there's one right behind us over here." And at first, I'm thinking, "I don't see nothing," until I saw it kind of rocking. You know what I mean? If you look at it long enough, and then I realized it was, I mean. The way I would describe it is it always stayed uh, like two tiers in. You know what I mean? Always had something in front of it, uh, you know, branch hanging down or a tree in front of it. You get a point, you had to look through it to see it, and then you'd see it. And he didn't worry. He wasn't worried about seeing him. He, he tracked us all the way down the, the bank. And, and at uh, this point, we were already so far in that we would have had to go back towards him to get out. So we just went ahead and took our way out. Yeah. Like you guys are probably like you're thinking, why if you saw that way and get out? Well, he was behind the way we came in. He was behind us, so we couldn't turn around and go back because he was back there behind us, like he was trailing yeah. us. So our only option was to hike on out. Can you describe for the audience what you actually saw? 
what you, I realize it's glimpses. It's it's you know hiding itself in brush, which is pretty consistent to what a lot of witnesses say. But the other few glimpses that you got of this gray creature, can you describe to the audience what you saw? Yeah, he was probably about, I would say, nine feet tall, and he was gray. I say he, I'm not sure if it was a he or she, but you know how uh, you know how sloths grow algae in their fur? Yeah. Like they have a, it was almost like the tips of his fur looked greenish, like he had some kind of, uh, yeah, like he had uh, seaweed draped over his shoulders or something. Yeah, it's kind of, yeah, I, mean, I don't like know how to had, describe it, but like was, the tips of his... It was green. He, he, he had longer hair, and the tips of it were like a greenish color. Like, And I realize I was telling you this sounds a little... You know, we're telling you it had green hair. I'm saying that we assume it has something on its hair, like, but it was green, and it was blending very well. And, you know, there was one huge kind of flat clearing to the right side of us bank and creek to the left of us was the only time that he stood out among, you know, there was a kind of clearing in the undergrowth or whatever, and he let us know. He just stood, he stood there. right there. Yeah. We were like, oh, wow. You know what I mean? Like, that's when it all kind of, because you can always second guess what you're seeing, even if you see it, until it steps out. Would you describe it more of a chimp-like, ape-like, man-like? What, what, how would you describe what you saw? I would say I would say ape, except for their face is more. Uh, they look like an ape, except for the way they move. Like uh, I don't know how to describe it. Uh, what we saw looks like an ape, but the face looks. Yeah, they all have a distinct face. Uh, you know, there's uh, several, a lot of them that have the same features you know they got the the dark hair thick hair above the brow below the bottom lip and then you have but they have they have a nose a wide a wide flat nose like apes look all all alike these don't you know i mean it's yeah they all look different you can distinct you can distinctly tell them apart like they some some of them resemble but they're uh they all look different in the face. It's like, uh, you know how humans look different? Yeah. You can tell humans apart. They look different, but it's in a different way. I don't know how to, to put it into words. Matt, you're better at that yeah. than me. Like, I'm trying to. Uh... Yeah, I've gotten, uh, I got pictures, okay? And I could literally name them by size, shape, and, uh, you know, their features. There is one that is looks more animal than the rest. There's, you know, it'd be hard-pressed to pick out some skin on it. And then there's another one that looks really chimp-like. I mean, down to the mouth and everything, as far as kind of sticking out a little bit, you know what I mean? Like, puffs his lips out. But other than that, they all look kind of like a, like you think a hairy hominid would look, you know what I mean? That's kind of the thing. Over This has gone on for long enough to where we've, you know, we've set up cameras, we've gotten real close and personal and so that's we've had more questions than answered but we just kept kind of plugging away at it and watching what they do and they've gotten comfortable around us there's nothing i don't feel like we could do about it we're not egging them on but it it almost seems like they've gotten too comfortable with you guys i think it's fascinating though you how you guys describe them because you know that was one of the questions as you as we were all talking last night I had asked Mike Humphreys that question at the Siege of Fanabia, and I had already told you guys this, but I had asked him that question. I'd said, hey, you know, what do they look like? And he said, well, some of them look more ape-like, some of them look more chimp-like, some of them look more like a Down syndrome type person. It's not like one is identical to another. He goes, they just kind of have a different look. And I, that always kind of stuck with me. And then when you guys said that last night, that really hit me hard because I, I was thinking back to the hours I spent on the phone with Mike Humphreys the uh, the guy from Siege of Hanabi and, and asked him, you know, what what is it that they look like? And he didn't really have like a direct answer for me. He said, well, there's one, the big one kind of looks more like an ape. Uh, he said, there's another one that looks very much like a chimpanzee. There's one that looks kind of like a person with Down syndrome. Uh, he goes, they just kind of have a different different look. 
And this has kind of turned your guys' world upside down, I would imagine. I mean, Jesus, you know, going from sawing down, a, uh, you know, a, a brush to or a bush to uh, being chased, you know, all the way back up to the house by something. Yeah, yeah. it's uh, as it's gone on, it's it's totally consumed our life. Actually, it's a uh, we get many nights could... of no sleep, worrying about our family, worrying about the kids, worrying about the neighbors. Yeah, it's yeah, totally my, I... turned our. And my biggest thing was, you know, I got, I grew up, uh, you know, I wasn't, I didn't grow up afraid of the dark. I'm not, you know what I mean? We don't, I wasn't worried about dying every second day. So my biggest goal was how are we going to get this to move on without, it's not like I told my family. I just don't tell anybody. You know what I mean? I just kind of set up watching, put more lights out and until it got to the point where they were getting so bold that you think they're going to come out and shake your hand. And that's when you're like. Okay. You know what I mean? Eventually, you got to watch the kids down and say, there's something going on. You know, we waited until I had enough proof to where there wasn't going to be any denying it. You know, everybody, you know, has heard things before and stuff. But you get my point. You don't want to – you think you want your kids to go to school and say that? <laughs> no. It's well, just... the spring, we had left our windows open. It was about 65 degrees. And we woke up, me and my wife, she tapped me when I woke up in the middle of the night, and there's a, like this deep guttural growling outside my window. And uh, she was going, what's that? What's that? And uh, it was them. They were outside my window. It's like they want me and, my, me and my brother to come out there. And it's almost like if we don't go out there, then they, at the, they come to our house and throw stuff at the house knock the wind knock on the windows like i have mulch around my house they throw mulch against my windows they toy with my dog they'll go from window to window and tap on the window and he'll run and bark back and forth for hours like they toy with them they get on the roof run across the roof until we yeah. come out and then everything calm you know until they one of them will get worked up or it's like they get entertainment from us uh well, and I, it's totally. The thing is, if we try to ignore him, then it makes it worse. I was at his house when the first encounter happened. Okay, so he's like, he's down the street, not far. A week or so later, um, I uh, was driving home, coming from the west side of my house, east side of my house, and uh, I noticed there's a tree laying over my deck, and I'm thinking, what in the world? So I come up here and. I have a tree. I can't remember what kind of it is or whatever, but branches out. You know, you've got a tall one trunk up for about two feet and a kind of, you know, five parts branch out. And it's really tall, like 50 feet. Anyway, it had fallen over on my deck. So it was, you know, equally sharing the weight between my deck, the ground, and the chimney. So I called Mick. He comes over. We take a chainsaw and cut it up. And as we were standing there trying to figure out how we wanted to take it down, right next to the base of the truck are these big, huge footprints and the toes were dug in. You know what I mean? Like there was no question what that was. A buddy of mine, we had been, uh, siding the front of the house and, uh, he had stopped by with something. I didn't say one word to him other than I hadn't said a thing to him about any of this. I walked back there and I go, Hey, what's that look like right there? And I just pointed at the ground. He reached down and touched it. He goes, what in the world, dude? That's that's a footprint. I said, yeah, that's what it looks like to me. There was no denying it is what I'm getting at. And so then I find out sometimes they push trees over. And I found that out later on because, you know, we heard it. <laughs> you know, when they get worked up, uh, a tree's going to get pushed over, a branch is going to get ripped off, or some animal's going to get brutally beaten is what's going to happen. So it pushed a tree over on your home? Well, I don't know that, but here's here's what I'm getting at is – it looked like it. We dude. go from, we go from, you know, I had an encounter at his house, right? You know, walk through the woods, find and stuff. It kind of goes from me and his inside joke to me thinking, how's this thing find my house? Now I'm paranoid, like, this thing's trying to finish me off, you know what I mean? And then I start looking around property and I start finding other footprints and places where it's setting up camp, you know what I mean? Like, it's not just been there once. And I'm thinking, this thing's stalking me. Now, you understand how it changed? Yeah. So I'm thinking, how in the world did it find my house? You know, can it smell me? I mean, it, it's unnerving. 
Yeah, and you both live in a pretty rural area. I mean, I realize you guys have neighbors, but I mean, for the most part, you're in a really rural area. Uh, Mick, you got chased by one. Do you want to tell us what happened with that? Yeah, uh, I talked to you. It was 4th of July weekend. You had called and checked. And they hadn't been real active, fireworks. And I was like, yeah, it's been quiet. And it was like July 6th. And you said, I was just checking. I was curious how they were acting over 4th of July weekend. So it was July 6th, and I was here by myself. Wife and kids were gone. And uh, I was out in the garage building a gun rack, just messing around. And uh, I hear something. I hear the owl. It was going. It was doing that. Like a... I don't want to know how to, my brother does it better, but he won't do it anymore because it attracts him. But it's like an owl, but it's not. Anyway, I heard it a couple times. So I, I have a bright flashlight, and uh, it's like they play. You shine the flashlight at them, and you can see them, and they'll run out into the dark. So I heard them, so I step out. I'm shining the flashlight around. I go back in the garage, and it got louder. So I stepped out, and I could hear where they're at, the same spot where I can shine them every night. And I step out probably 15 feet from my garage, and I shine down there. And uh, there's two of them. And they, they're dodging the light, so they run behind this big pine tree. And they're looking around, so I play my little game with them. I act like I'm looking somewhere else, and I'll turn, and I shine back. But when I shine back, it was the big one, the big gray one. And he wasn't dodging. I shine my light directly at him, and he's staring right at me. And I, I had an uneasy feeling. I was like, okay. So he looks at me, and uh, all of a sudden, he drops to all fours and starts coming at me. It's like 200 yards away. So I'm 15 feet from the garage. I run in the garage. As soon as I run in the garage, I hit the garage door. It starts to come down, and when it's about three feet from the ground, I have a big green trash can. And it, he throws it across in front of the garage door, and I see his feet run right behind it. And I shut the door. I run in the house, load my guns. He starts banging on my house. I have a sunroom in the back. He starts shaking the sunroom. Got on the roof, was running back and forth on the roof, outside yelling. That was probably the most terrifying night I've had this whole time. Like, I mean, he tormented me till actually my dog was in my bedroom between the bathroom and the bed, halfway underneath the bed. Usually he's barking. He didn't. He was like cowering underneath the bed. It was tapping on my windows doing everything it could. It did it till 4.30 in the morning. It was probably the most terrifying night I've had. Like, I I didn't know what to do at that point. I uh, I just waited it out, and finally it left. But, uh, yeah, it dropped to all fours. Didn't run on two feet. It stared at me, and then all of a sudden, it like, in one motion, it was on all fours, and I turned and came in. I didn't see nothing until the trash can flew across the front of the door. And I saw its feet run behind it across the other door, but the other door was shut. That was the most recent. I, we were out last night, and they were the full moon. So on full moons, we always go out and try to keep them at bay because they get they're more aggressive on full moons. Uh, so if we stay out and shine our flashlights or kind of keep them occupied, then it keeps them from banging on the house or tormenting us, basically. But, yeah, that was my... That's really terrifying that it would chase you back up, just kind of the same way it did your brother. I mean, it chased you right up. He said it was a gray color. Yeah, it was the big gray one that we saw out in the woods. Like, I could see his... When I shine down there, I could see his skin, like, his, through his hair. Like, I, don't, I saw him plain as day, and he just stared at me like... He wasn't moving. The other ones will dodge the light, play around. He was staring at me like, and I thought, I just had an uneasy feeling as soon as it shined down there because it wasn't the normal ones that I usually shine. And the normal ones, we we think they're, or we call them like the adolescents, like they're teenagers because they play. Like they like to, like they'll stay just outside the light or you'll get their, you'll get them for a second. It's like they dodge the light and they run around or they'll crawl around and, but when I shined back down there, those two were gone, and he was standing there. I'm talking within 15 seconds. Can you describe how he dropped all fours? Effortlessly, like one motion. Like if he was 
See, this is where I have trouble describing how they move because it's so... This is my issue with these creatures. They, the way they, everything they do is effortless. Uh, like it was like a one motion, like if he was to take a step forward, it doesn't make sense unless you see what I'm talking about. But like just as like just as easy as like if he was taking a step forward, he dropped to all fours. It was in one motion, like it was. Uh, I don't even know how to describe. It was just a fluent. Like it was effortless. Like, uh, and I know what you mean, and that's why I wanted to ask you. Uh, you know, with, I was telling you guys last night with my own encounter, uh, it's like it just collapsed to all fours, but it was very, like you said, very effortlessly. It's almost like they're just as comfortable on all fours as they are up on two legs. I mean, it's almost the same. Oh yeah, like they, they, everything they do is comfortable. Like they crawl on their bellies. And they use their fingers and their toes, like I've said that several times, but that's the creepiest thing I've ever seen. Like, you'll catch eyes shine close to the ground, you'll think, oh, and you'll look. But, like, we were at Matt's house one night, and they are acting up, yelling, and I went over there, and we walked up, and he's got a hill on the side of his house, and we shined over there, and it was crawling on its, its belly. It's parallel to the ground, but they use their fingers and their toes to move like an insect and it, it's an eight foot effortless and it leaves it leaves divots in my yard where you can see where they you know it's like it's just yeah fingers and toes i had one do that on the side of my house one night i was probably 20 feet away from it and i shined over there and i have i have solar lights and i thought it was a solar light and i looked and it was in the wrong spot and i looked again and it was on its belly and it moved backwards in that motion on its fingers and toes, and I mean, every time I see that, it it's unsettling. I don't know how to describe it, but uh... it is very unsettling. You know, after our encounter, I, it's funny you say insect because I remember what he's saying, like a spider. They move like yeah, a like it. and he's right. That's kind of what we we saw. I don't know if that's what you guys saw, but that's exactly how we just yeah, like a spider. They move like spiders when they're down crawl it's really creepy to see them use their fingertips and their back toes. And it sounds crazy, but until you see it, it I mean. I, it's hard to describe. When I saw that is when I really decided, I thought, I'm glad I'm not going through this by myself. <laughs> you know what I mean? At least I got somebody to, you know, talk to it about or whatever, say, did you see that? Because that's a lot. Yeah, that that's... I've never heard of that before. Yeah, no, and and, that, and that's the thing is I remember when we came out with our encounter, took a lot of heat for that. People were saying, oh, they don't move that way. They don't, And I'm like, hey, man, I'm just telling you what I saw. It's not... Uh, you know, I'm, they move like spiders on the ground. They can belly crawl. They can walk upright on two legs and be just as comfortable on all fours or appear to be just as comfortable on all fours when they move on all fours. Yeah, and when they're on all fours, it looks like they're supposed to be on all fours. It does, like, yeah. That's what I – like you're saying, it's like it's effortless. Whatever they do, the way they move is fast and smooth and effortless, whatever they decide to do. If they decide to jump up in a tree and go up, they can go up a tree – instantaneously like everything they do is strength. yeah like they just grab a tree and they're up it like i mean it's yeah and i think that's why there's the the paranormal comes into this field if you want my honest opinion uh, i was telling you guys last night you know woody still is on the fence whether this is a paranormal thing or not and if you ask him why the the reason why is because they don't move like anything else on this planet. They move very natural and unnaturally. I, I know that doesn't make any sense, but it's very effortless for them to do it. But it seems so unnatural to us to watch what they do and how they move and how they react to different things. Uh, tell me about the, the neighbors in the area. Yeah, uh... We had hot, we went back behind the property across the street. Mike, across the street from me, there's houses, and then behind the houses, you have, I'd say, 100 yards of woods, but they're cleared out. It's like a backyard, beautiful houses, but the woods are cleared out. The trees are all still there, but in between the trees, all the brush and stuff's been cleared out, so it's a clearing until this creek. Then behind the creek, Another 100 yards, and some of it goes back for miles. And then to the right of my house, 100 yards past the creek is a reservoir. 
But anyway, uh, I was out right after I talked to you, actually, and uh, my neighbor across the street, he's an elderly man, and he comes down, and he's got a bad back, and he says, Meg. So I go down to his driveway to meet him because I don't want him to have to walk. Anyway, I go down there, and he's like, hey, uh, I wanted to uh, let you know the other night. And I said, yeah, because I thought he was going to say something about this. And he goes, well, I know you got that little boy, and uh, I saw a, a raccoon look pretty rough the other night. He goes, I was going to tell you at night, make sure you keep uh, – Make sure you keep an eye on him. Don't let him get outside. I said, oh, I don't. And I said, there's other things out here at night. And he kind of looked at me. And he goes, what do you mean? And I said, uh, yeah, there's stuff out here that I can't explain. Because I was trying to, I, I'd been fighting because I wanted to go there and talk to him anyway about it. Because I know. We've sat outside my garage, and there's no way on earth that he hadn't heard what we've heard. Or it slapped his house, actually, and he brought this up. But anyway, he said, what are you talking about? And he kind of grinned at me like he was waiting for me to say it first. And I said, well, I said, I've been, I've been fighting this with you, but I said, the only way I can describe it is a Sasquatch. And he grinned. He goes, yeah, they're out there. And I said, are you kidding me? I said, I know they're out there. Um, and he goes, no. He goes, they're out there. We all know about it. He goes, the lady down the street, she set up cameras to take pictures of them. And I said, so all you guys know? And he goes, yeah. I said, so that's why you go in before dark. And he goes, oh, yeah. He goes, they've been here for years. But he goes, until recently, they haven't been, they don't bother us. And he goes, the other night, one slapped my house. And he goes, I got my 30 out 6 loaded. And I said, yeah. I said, we were sitting out in my driveway when it slapped your house. And he goes, really? He goes, well, next time they're outside my house, call me. So I said, okay. But anyway, he let me know that all these elderly people, around here already know that they're out there they took pictures the lady had taken them to the police because she thought that they were uh she said that there's black people back there living but he said that he looked at the pictures and it wasn't there were there was hair and she took it to the police and the police said well there's nothing we can do about that so basically he said they know they just don't want nothing to do with it and then matt's neighbor down the street from him I'll let him tell that story, but yeah, we're there slowly, I talked to another man riding a bike. He told me he carries a gun. He heard a scream at night. He can't, don't know what it is, but he said he doesn't go, he doesn't stay out after dark. And he said he carries a gun that can knock down anything he knows about. So they've all slowly have come and uh, said something about it. But Matt's neighbor, I'll let him tell a story about that, but. Matt, what did your neighbor say? He stands out in his driveway a lot, you know, kind of paces around his house, just his way. My wife is down there talking to his wife, and he came out and said, Hey, uh, I saw something uh, down there by your house the other night. She's like, Oh, yeah? What's that? You know? He was like, I don't know. I'd call it a Bigfoot. <laughs> and she just looked at him, and, you know, my wife had heard a couple things, but, you know, she's just been let in, you know. And unfortunately, uh, and I had never talked to that guy before, nothing. You know, I have talked to him since, and I don't never see him anymore. But there for a while, they were keeping it pretty quiet with everyone else. But it was almost like since they had known that me and him knew they were there, they weren't worried about us. You know what I mean? But they still, you know, use discretion everywhere else. Well, he said that he watched it walk across. He said he watched it walk across the road and beside Matt's garage. Yeah, he I walked sitting out there and he watched my tree it. And it stood under my tree for a while, watching me in the garage, and then walked on around the, you know, down the ditch, you know, like the little drainage creek or whatever. And uh, I said, you sure it wasn't so? You so and so? And he said, uh, unless they're nine foot tall. <laughs> I was like, yeah, that's nice. So that's when I started, you know, setting up cameras around my property, and I've gotten like, you know, like wild ass crap there or something. It, it's so fascinating, and it's so hard to. I know there's so much information that you guys had. There's so many run-ins you guys have had. It's hard to cram that into like an hour show or an yeah. hour and a half show. 
But for the audience, Matt or Mick, whichever one of you guys want to go at it, you guys have seen three distinct creatures. Can you describe the creatures that you've seen? Well, we've seen, like last night, I saw six different ones just at my house, and he was here at his house too. At this point, we kind of separate. We'll stay. I'll stay at my house and sit outside the garage, and he'll stay at his house and sit outside the garage, especially on full moons. Then we have our nights off. We used to sit together and keep them at bay, but now that they're at both houses, uh, we'll sit, and if they start getting aggressive at one, then we'll drive or drive to each other's house and chase them off, bring guns, cock them, whatever, and uh, chase them off. But, uh, yeah, around my house, there's the ones that look more apish, uh, but at his house, he's got three distinct. He's got one he calls furry face. He's got one he calls furry face, and he's covered in fe- he's got fur all over his face. But he's the he's the smart one. Like we've came to a conclusion that if we have to, if it ever got to where we had to fight these off, like you know, where Siege of Hanobia, where they come in, they're aggressive because they keep getting more and more aggressive. Uh, he's the one we got to take out first because he he is the brains of the operation. But he's not the biggest one, but he's the smartest by far. Now, what makes you think he's the smartest? Well, he, uh, I mean, I've got it on camera, him directing the others. I know it sounds strange. I mean, I'm only telling you because I believe you believe me. What I'm saying is that's why for a while I didn't want to go on the show. I said, why in the world would I do that? You know what I mean? I've seen things that people be like, right, I got you. You know what I mean? Because I'm not going to say I would have said that before this. I've been like, I ain't mad at you, and I ain't going to call you a liar, but these are, they're very intelligent. When you say directing, what do you mean? They just, they make a, they have a noise for everything, a knock for everything, a, you know, they communicate that way. They pop their lips, their teeth. I mean, he'll, I've seen him motion with his arm, and if they don't go, he'll bark at them, you know what I mean? Like, and they'll go, and I'm like, this guy is like, he, you know, he's, Telling them where's the safe place to hide and where you're going to go, you know, it's very bizarre. But I thought, you know, it makes sense, I guess. These things have made it their business to stay out of sight, and they're good at it. Like I told you last night, the conclusion I've come to, if I had to say, they said, you know, what's their what's their trait that they could be known by? I would say low to no risk. They will not take it. You know what I mean? People say they know what guns are. I don't believe that. I believe they think if they don't know what it is, stop traffic. They're not taking a chance. You know what I mean? You can pull a popsicle out of your pocket, and if they ain't never seen one, they're going to hit the brakes because they're not going to—they're not risking it. You know, their whole thing is survive and stay hidden. It's fascinating you mentioned that. You know, in the primate world, in the non-human primate world, you always have an alpha male. You always have one that kind of directs traffic. And that goes with chimpanzees, that goes with apes, that goes with... There's a hierarchy of authority among non-human primates. And I think that's fascinating that you bring that up. And so the one you're talking about... He is not the alpha. But what I'm saying is, he's next in line. You know what I mean? In the alpha, I... The alpha stays hidden unless... Yeah, you, if you, if you see We don't ever hand, really know what happened. Yeah. yeah. But when you, you hear him, it's distinct, and you know it's him, and he talks. He, uh, he will echo through the woods like, Brother! I mean, that's like bellows, and they come running to him. It's weird, it's strange, but he gets their attention, and they do exactly what he says. And I've heard trees come down. I've heard him grab a coon up, sound like, you know, I've heard coons fight and everything. No, this is like he grabs it by the back, swings it around, torments it, and then smacks it off a tree. Like... When he gets up and walks over there, something's going down. You know what I mean? Very, very strange. When you say he talks, what do you mean? Um, you can hear him talk, yeah. I mean, I can't understand what words he's saying or nothing, but he's distinctly talking to them, and he talks loud. He's not trying to hide it. I well, I listened uh, to uh, Sierra. We listened to Sierra sounds one night, and that's what it sounds like. Uh, the like the It's like yeah. a gurgling. A little more. Like, this is a little more deep and drawn out, you know what I mean? But it's that same kind of, I can't make out what he's saying, but he's definitely communicating. Yeah, and they, you can hear them talk back. But that's the only time they do it is when he does it. That's interesting. 
and before you ever see him, you'll hear, we hardly ever hear, like, knocks. You know, people are like, wow, we would knock and all this. We don't hear nothing about that. The only time we ever hear wood knocks, that means daddy's coming, and you hear half of them just rolling out. And we think it's the women and children are out. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Like, he clears out them to safety, and then he comes out, like, you know, and then the other adolescents will ever run around him like, daddy's here. You know what I mean? It's, it seems weird, but that's how it goes down. No, not as weird as you would think. Yeah, they, they definitely have a distinct system of how they move and communicate and yeah, and if he gets aggravated, we've heard it several times, and he, uh, it's like a dad yelling at his kid. You know, he just gets worked up and he yells louder and louder, and you will hear a tree fall in the forest. And that's, you'd be lucky if that's all you hear. It's like he keeps them in line. They'll get worked up, right? The other adolescents are, you know, all their angst built up. I told Mick, you know, maybe when the, you know, full moons are active, or maybe when the females are in heat, I don't know. But they'll get worked up, and then he'll come out there and knock, you know, knock it off, pretty much. Yeah, that's interesting. So you guys have seen that alpha male, then? Yeah, yeah. he's the big he's gray. Way one. bigger than the rest. He's huge. He's way taller. Right? He's... The the other one that you guys mentioned, does it have hair all over its face? You said it was hairy. Yeah, he's the one that. Uh, I I put, I put it to you like this, like like I told you, three of my buddies. I don't tell people this, but I got three buddies. I told you, you just come over and hang out all the time. I'd have to run them off around the arc. Finally, I'd tell them, like, this is what's going down. They didn't question me at all. You know what I mean? They're like, wow, that's crazy. I want to see it. Well, at three different times, I said, you know, stop by sometime. They'd call, come by, and uh, I'd take them out there to see it, and they split. They hit the Jeep and say, I'm done here, dude. They ain't come back. They're like, I ain't mad at you, but I ain't coming back out there because Ain't, they're not cute. It's it's not what you think. You see you see it, and then you're thinking, I can't believe what I'm looking at. They're huge. They're not pretty. That's what I was to say about this one. I call him furry face because he's the only one. He was a dapper man. He's got hair all over him, and it looks well kept. And that's the only one. That looks like you know what I mean. Like I don't know how to explain it. He's just uh, he keeps it clean. You know what I mean. He's the one that runs it. The rest of them, some of them really. You know, you said that Down syndrome thing earlier. There's a couple of them. You're like, wow, man. You know, the the bridge of their mouth, you know, where their teeth, you know, snaggled up even. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's, like it's not healthy. They all, they're, all of their coats look healthy. But I'm saying as far as their face, there's a couple of them that, you know, they got hit by the ugly stick or something. And I'm saying if you see that, if, that's why, I, like, my wife and kids, I keep, I, they're in before dark. I don't want them to see nothing like this. That, I don't, they don't need that in their head. What do the other two look like? Well, the ones here's the ones here's like I've tried it before. The the hairy the furry ones, uh he's always at my house. Like Operation Me, you know what I mean? And then there's a big one, I call him the ogre. He's like he's not real smart. He'll walk out and stand in front of a, a game cam for seven minutes. So every thirty seconds he gets flashed in the face and ain't figured out a move yet. And uh, then there's another one that's got, he looks most chimp-like. And you don't, he, you barely see him. I mean, he's, that dude is quick and uh, he's smaller than the other two. And uh, you will see him, but not for long. You know what I mean? And then the rest, it's like they just come to spectate. And it's like, like that guy said last night, it's like we're their television. Hey, you guys bored? Let's go over here and check these guys out. They already know we're here. Yeah, that's what it seems like. How often are they getting on the homes, uh, on the roof? How often are they coming up close to the house? And what have you guys tried to get them to back off? Well, I'll just tell you about my situation. Mine is, they're like, uh, the the only way I can describe it is kind of like, you know, they need attention, right? So let's say, I don't, I'm not outside at all. I'm in before, you know, I'm in it by 5 p.m. and I ain't back out. You know, I might hear some noises or whatever, and, you know, they get louder and louder. Might get some tapping on the window. Like my daughter says, it's like we're in a fishbowl. I'm like, yep. They don't bang it like they're going to break it. You just hear that pump, 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 you know. And if the longer I don't come out, they'll run on my roof to where it sounds like, you know, they might come through it. But if I come out the door... They'll start whistling back and forth like, there he is. 
You see what I'm saying? It's like a fascination that you know is sick and you don't want to end up dying from it. But sometimes they're more aggressive. Sometimes they're not. But uh, it's almost like like if I work, if I'm in my garage working or whatever, and I ignore them, you know, they they will demand your attention. Like I told you the story about me turning my stereo up in there, just you know, kind of messing with them. Because I was like, shut up, you know. And then they were like screaming at me to the point where I had my stereo like ready to melt the windows in my garage. You know, it's like one in the morning. I know my neighbors are like, what in the world is going on over there? Well, they all woke up, saw it firsthand. The neighbors across the street, you know. Garage door opens, they're gone. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like everybody, but they weren't they weren't going to be, you know, appeased that night is what I'm getting at. I ended up having to call me and say, hey, dude, could you uh, kind of clear them out with your truck so I can get to the house? You know what I mean? Because I wasn't going to walk to the house. I'd already seen six of them outside my garage door. So that's what I'm saying. Because most of the time, you know, they stay, you know, at a respectable distance, and sometimes you think, this, am I going to get a hug? I mean, how close is this thing going to get, you know? But they've never, I will say, I've never had one show his teeth at me or growl at me or nothing. You know, they do, like, kind of pop their lips and chatter their teeth. That's about it. But they will scream at you, you know what I mean, like if you're not giving them attention. Mixed thing is, you know, he don't really hang out outside like that, so... They smack his windows inside of his house, and, you know, like, he'll have them throwing stuff at the side of the house, like, uh, you know, I get outside my house, like, three times a night. Usually, right after it gets dark, they're real... We've kind of figured out that across the street from me, there's a pathway that goes straight back between two houses. It's a clear path to the thick woods. And then about 200 yards down, there's another path. That's got hedges about 10 feet high that go all the way to the street from the woods. And there's a patch of woods right behind the houses to the r- I have a house diagonal to the left and a house diagonal to the right. And right, my house is right in between. Well, right there is a path that goes all the way back. So we've kind of figured it out. We were talking about it last night. Uh, we think that, like, they come through here to get to the neighborhood. Like, this is their entry. So what I do is right after dark, you can hear them vocalize and yell. So I'll go out there and let them know I'm out there. And then they either go away or whatever. And if I hear something, like I can I can hear them in the house yelling or screaming or something. So I'll go outside, take my flashlight, shine my flashlight down, stay out there for a half hour, hour. Some nights I stay out there all night, but usually I go out there about three times a night. Or in the middle of the night, if I hear something that wakes me up, I'll step outside with the flashlight. I'll take my 45, just in case, and uh, I'll well, step outside. But I make sure that they know I'm out there because if I don't, it's like he said, if you don't show any, if you, sh- if you ignore them, it gets worse. So if you just let let them know that you're there, kind of, it keeps them. From and doing I think the aggressive scaring the family. You know what I mean? Uh, Have you guys tried lighting the property up? Oh, yeah. yeah. I, we got lights all around it. The first thing we did is went crazy buying lights. And, uh, but they don't care anymore. Like my, at my house, they don't, they don't bother. I thought about, I mean, you know, uh, like that guy said, let it up like a stadium, you know? I don't think they care. They walk in the lights I have now. Yeah, I know that uh, when we spoke to uh, Jim last night, Jim Lansdale, he was saying put some bird shot in a shotgun and, and shoot it in their general direction. It almost kind of seems like they're just screwing with you guys. You know, when they're running you down and you're running into the home, they could easily catch you. I mean, if they really wanted you, they could easily yeah. catch you. Yeah, oh, I know. And so it makes me wonder if they're just... They could come in They could come in any second of any day and get us. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Once you understand, when you see them move and walk and climb and everything you realize that they're not you know killers or we'd all be dead sitting right now you just don't know what you know you don't want to set them off or have one of your kids set them off or you see what i'm saying that's where the uh unease comes in because i'll i'll cuss at them i'll yell at them you know and they'll back off but we uh, don't run from them unless they run at us like we try like we've joked before like they don't know what to do with us because <laughs> 
Yeah, the only time yeah. I'll run is if they're coming at me, and you, anybody in their right mind is going to run. Like, you see one of these things, and it's coming at you, you're going to run. I don't give a crap if you're, I don't care who you are, I will say this on air. Anybody in this world would run if one of these things is running at you. So we've been trying to be aggressive, but you don't have a choice. Like, this isn't, yeah, if you were going to kill one, it's not an easy kill. You know, it's not like. It's funny, you know, when somebody's like, oh, man, I'll check that thing out. I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. Yeah, it all changes. You you know, we've several, several times we've watched that transition. We just stand back and watch them. Yeah, go ahead, man, go ahead. They're like, we're going to go on in here and check it out. I'm like, go ahead, knock stuff out. And it's like, should we tell them to stop? I'm like, no, nah, man, let them go. They got to figure it out. <laughs> And it's like you want to watch tail between the legs. Everybody thinks they're bad until you see them, and it's not what you think. Yeah, that's true. It's not like the you know they ain't got big fangs and they ain't trying to kill you. I'm saying it's just that you ain't used to seeing that kind of size and girth. And you get my point. It's just it's real humbling is what I'm getting at. Yeah, no, and I understand that. And I know you guys aren't aren't researchers. You guys aren't investigators. You know they just kind of showed up on your right. property, and you guys are wanting right. them to just go away. And that might be one way to yeah. get them to go away. The bird shot's not a bad idea. You know, it's you're not going to kill one by doing it, and you're not going to maim one by doing it, but it's going to get them to back off every time. You know, if you guys decide to come out. See, the problem I think you guys are running into is they're getting used to the fact that they can bang on your house and you'll come out. You guys are playing the game. They'll come out. They tap on your windows. They mess with you guys. You guys will come out. The minute you guys go in, the tapping, all the other stuff gets worse and worse and worse. But I think in your guys' situation, I, w I honestly would try the birdshot thing. I'd fire off a shot, let them know uh, you guys mean business. You're not playing around. I'd definitely put a couple slugs like we talked about towards the end of that birdshot just in case you need it. You know, the more I thought about what Jim said, when he first said that, I cringed. But I think he might be right. I think it might be the best way to get them to back off of the property, back off of you guys uh, you know, for the most part, they're probably not going to leave, but they may back off the property, quit screwing with you guys, quit running on the roof, quit tapping on the windows, messing with your dog. I have a feeling it's going to probably be more than one show with you guys. You know, it's, it's one of those things to where I'd love, will you guys give me an update on if you try the birdshot thing? Let me know if it works. Yeah. 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 Here's my thing That's about like that. I hear you guys say that, okay? But we've sat out here in front of my garage and in front of his garage, and they move in pairs of twos, and they've str strategically, like, they'll surround us. Like, we'll get them behind. We'll get two 150 yards down the road, two, where we can see them. They're showing themselves, like, plain as day, two between the houses across my street, two across the street to the left they surround us it's like they're strategically so here's practice. my thing with the bird shot if i shoot bird shot at one of them okay and then i got two of them 50 yards to my left i got another two 50 yards to my right and i shoot at one group of them that's a good idea but what if it pisses them off like I, i'm not trying to be argumentative i just i don't this is where i don't i i, I would have to be 120 percent sure that that's going to chase them off. Because oh, what, what are you going to do if you got all of them groups? They're like, oh, he tried to shoot him, so they come at you. Then you got your hands. Do you understand what uh, I'm saying? Like, it's, a, it's like we were talking. Yeah, no, I understand. If you're walking through the woods, right, this is what I'm betting. If you're walking through the woods and you hear one call or it cracks a stick and makes you look at it, that means you are right on top of another one because that's what they do. They take, they misdirection, like, you start getting up on one, they hunker down, freeze. And then it's another one's job to make sure and distract you. See my point? Like, I walked down the bank one day, and there was one laying on the bank, sunning, like, no care in the world. And I've been down, and I'm looking with a monocular, and as I'm watching this one, the my, my lens fills with black. The dude stepped right in front of me. You get my point? Like, they're going to distract you away from the little ones, the females, and then each other. You'll know, like, don't even look at the little ones. Because if you are, every one of them staring at you. You know what I mean? And it's like the females, you don't want her to make a noise. Because if she does, they get worked up. You get my point? It's like there's definitely, everybody's got their place, their rules, and their, you know, their 
you know, you don't, they're pecking order, I guess. Well, I'm not saying that it can't go bad. Yeah. Uh, that's why I cringe when he first said it. But I think if you're wanting them to go away, uh, and birdshot really isn't, you know, especially if you're shooting from a distance, it's going to make really more noise than it's going to do anything. Uh, and it might get them to back off of it. Now, could it upset them? Could it enrage them? Absolutely. Uh, it's hard to say what to do in this situation because you guys have tried the lights. I know you guys have tried game cams. I know you guys have tried cameras. And from our conversation in the past, it seems like the whole neighborhood, the moment it starts getting dark, everyone goes in, shuts the blinds, shuts the door, locks everything. You know, it's pretty much a ghost town. This might get them to back off, though, away from your home. The only other option I would give you guys is to ignore them. Now, for about two weeks, that may not work. They may come bang on the house. They may get on the roof. They may do. But after a while, they'll lose interest. See, I think there's only two ways to make them go away. One is they lose interest in you. You're no longer entertaining. Or two, uh, you know, you start, the birdshot's a good idea. Again, you're not going to kill one. You're not even going to really maim one if you hit it with birdshot. And I think it's it, it'll give a clear message to them to back off. You're not playing anymore. Back off. But in the same breath, I'd put two slugs at the at the towards the end of that bird shot, just in case you need it. But it, I, I want you guys to do what you're comfortable with. I mean, these are options. Obviously, lights aren't working. Cameras aren't working. They're not leaving. They're really not stopping messing with you guys. The one thing I thought was interesting is on July 4th, you guys had no activity. It's almost like the forest was a ghost town. I think at this point, it's almost like overgrown family group or something. And it's just spilling out of the woods. Keep me updated on what, what happens yeah. here, will you? Let me know if the bird shot, if you guys decide to do that, let me know what happens when you guys do that. Uh, the only other thing you can do is ignore them. All the old-fashioned stuff of lighting the place up and putting cameras up, none of that's working. So this is kind of plan B. Uh, I'd be real curious to see what works. You know, if you guys aren't comfortable shooting at them, uh, then the only other thing I tell you is try and ignore it, see if it goes away. Light the place up and ignore it. Go to bed, turn the TV on, and hopefully they'll back off the property. It's the only other thing I would recommend. I will let you know, but, I mean, we've been at this for months. You know what I mean? So it's just kind of a trial and error thing. And uh, I think our biggest concern is it looks a little bit like appeasement, right? But on the other hand, it's, you know, if I got to go out here and stand here for 20 minutes so you guys can whistle, whatever, as long as, you know what I mean, as long as you stay home. You, know, you get my point? Yeah. So you just don't want to do that one thing that that causes something that ends up being a story for of the ages. <laughs> you know, I got a wife and kids, man. Yeah, I, no, I'm I not here for that. I mean, I've moved. Like, we're pretty close to it now. But uh, it's just, you don't, you know, I don't want to make the paper. I ain't trying to get famous. I don't want nothing about it other than them to keep on moving down the road and they're not doing it so we might try the buckshot might send the wife and kids somewhere just in case they do get crazy but you can understand where we're coming from though it's like this is where i live right yeah no i understand you don't you don't want to make it worse you don't want to make it worse than what it what it is right yeah, no, i mean I like i understand what you're my saying. daughter works in the morning i pull her car up to the front door like in the grass up the hill in my yard you get my point so that she's got to take four steps to get to it I don't want nothing to happen to nobody. So, you know, that's my point. You got responsibilities. You think you don't want nothing you did to cause something. Because I got a long life to live, and I don't want to have to deal with that. You know what I mean? So I guess you got to look down the road. Yeah, no, I understand. Try to manage it, and if not, you gotta, you might have to move, I guess. But it's an interesting situation, I can tell you that. I would have never guessed it in a million years. Well, Mick and Matt, I appreciate you guys coming on the show, man. I appreciate you guys sharing the encounter and uh i'm sure we'll be in touch you know i'll be following up with you guys on this
Let us squatch. 